How's it going everybody? Well, I want to make this quick video about a couple of miniatures I just did recently. And as you know from looking at my previous videos, I like to paint and collect fantasy miniatures. And one of the things that I just did very recently over spring break was two from my herpetology class. My teacher has us doing these individual assignments, and two of these have to be something artistic. It could be a drawing, Photoshop, you know, something painted, what have you. One student already turned in one of her... Um, projects as baking a, a glass you could drink out of with a frog. It's supposed to be a glass frog from a family of, of actual glass frogs. Things like that. Well, I don't have much as far as drawing or I never use Photoshop at all, but I do paint miniatures, so I decided to pick up a couple I found from Reaper Miniatures and uh, see what I have. Well, first one is um, based on, I'll show you a picture first of what I was doing with the miniature itself, and that's this one from a little field book of Oklahoma reptiles. This one right here is the Ag, um, Agastrodon cor um, Contortrix. Oh, I need to practice saying these names. Agastrodon Contortrix. That's your your copperhead, the poisonous um, animal of that. Um, this one, of course, is copperhead because it has a copper color head, but also the markings on the back, when they do reach up to the back of the dorsum and touch the other side, they sort of um, come about as a um, an hourglass um, a pattern towards it. Um, for instance, you can see some of this, you can see some, you know, how they have a broad part on the, on, the, on the sides there, but as they meet up, they sort of narrow up like an hourglass shape. Well, the miniature I found to do that well, it's not perfectly accurate, but it's also not fantastic enough to, um, you know, so I can pass through some of a real snake. It's this one. Uh, I just got finished with this one, um, you know, last night. Um, base and all. Originally, it's just a, we get the miniature. It's just a miniature. It doesn't come with a base. Uh, the base itself I got from um, Games Workshop. And the paint job I tried to do... Um, um, as a copper head, kind of give it a light brown color. It's kind of a creamy underneath there that sometimes have that. They seem to vary in shades of browns from cream to um, a light brown. And then you have the dark brown. Uh, sometimes you know, on the very edges of these marks, you'll have the um, a, a sort of a dark, almost black. Black. I was thinking about that, but I wanted to get these done quickly. So um, as you can see, it's going to have a copper head there. Um, has a white line along the lower jaw here. And... Um, so there's that. The base itself, I coated it with um, sand. Um, yeah, I, it glued, um, it's glued some sand to that. I got these little shrubberies that I got from the Hobby Town USA. It's a hobby store. Various, you know, we get all hobby supplies. I look under the train section. You get these little shrub grasses. You know, you can make scenery out of that. So um, there you go. There's a copperhead. The second one <coughs> is much more elaborate. But again, I'll show you a picture first of what this is. This is the species Atheris hispida. Sorry for the gloss there. Let's see if I can angle that a bit. Lighting's kind of bad. Oh, here we go, more or less. And uh, this is a species found in um, so, um, Central Africa. It, um, and it's also known as the um, um, spiny bush viper. And so there's another picture of this here. This one's slightly younger, but very interesting. It's got a bright yellow. And as it further back, you see, between the scales, it tends to get very dark. And on also on the back here, you get patches of um, black ones, and there seem to be no pattern, but they seem to be, you know, brown, brownish to black um, scales on the back. Their the scales are keeled, and they point, they sort of point outward, giving it a sort of feathery or spiny look towards it. Very interesting. So. Again, Reaper Miniatures had one that just resembles enough to where if I give it a paint job, we can give you a good impression of that. It's a bit more elaborate, as I said. It's this one right here. Yeah, here it is. Um, this snake right here. Um, I don't know if I can get a close up. It doesn't really clear up very well, so I'll have to do it at a distance. But um, as a the miniature itself, it's just this, you know, wrapped around a rock, no real base. I had to add the base. Again, it's a Games Workshop base. And... Um, then I decided to decorate the base a bit, sort of give it an environment. Um, use some grass flock on the, over here, use put together with PVA glue and glue some, this morning, some small shrubs. And I, of course, I, as you can see, I put a tree by it. The tree itself, well, this I got from a grapevine. Just go to your store, find yourself some red, um, red grapes and look to see if, the, if they have a brown, if the vines are holding them are brown. Take one you find is appropriate, trim it down, and again using the same stuff here, I glue layer by layer using some PVA and super glue and made this foliage right here. So now I have a working about, about this. And also bear a note with PVA glue, which is kind of like Elmer's glue, um, you, you know, see it's slightly coming off there. It's not perfect there, but I'm expecting that. 
I use some PVA glue to cover this or seal it up there and to give it a slightly a bit more strength. You know, because some of these, if you ever notice some grapevines there, these tend to get very, very weak. And then after I've glued this on there, I use some matte spray varnish on top of that. It's sort of act like hairspray to sort of hold it together. So here you go. Now I'm going to turn these in as my art, pro uh, art assignment for my herpetology class. And, um, well, I hope we get a decent grade out of it. Well, let me know what y'all think. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>